seem to almost suggest that they come to your countries with a lesser breed of values. No, I don't think I said that at any point, and that's another time you've tried to put something in my well. mouth. But I said, and before we got all confrontational, which you did from the get-go, I said what the problem is here is that these things are all rubbing against each other. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking another video by Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray takes on Muslim activists and leaves them speechless. Wow. So let's start with the video. Go. Douglas Murray is at it again. This time, he takes on a host of Muslim activists in Qatar over immigration and the compatibility of Islam with Western culture. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Please. Hi, yeah, I'm Hamad Bahawash. I'm a senior at Georgetown University. And my question is to Mr. Douglas Murray. And before I ask my question, I just want to say, you said no sound bites, but then you said the developing world cannot move to the developed world. I don't know what that's I think about. I said it before. Uh, my question is, uh, since you brought up migration from the developing world, uh, I'd like to ask you this. Every year, the developed world sends about $300 billion of aid to the developing world, but the developing world sends back trillions in debt repayments uh, to the developed world. Now, um, don't you think that this is why, that this is the main reason why migrants are moving to Europe? Because money is moving out of the developing world. Wealth is leaving the developing world and moving to the developed world to build on what Lamont Hill said. Don't you think this is why people are moving to the Western world, to the developed world? Well, no, I don't. I don't uh, again, I repeat the fact there are no simple answers. And if it was simply the fact that you could, I don't know, do a debt default or something and solve the whole migration issue, then, then that would be great. But it just isn't the case. You think that if, if, uh, if um, for instance, all uh, African countries were allowed to default on debt, that they'd become uh, uh, um, burgeoning, uh, flourishing uh, 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 societies? You think that the problem across, for instance, sub-Saharan Africa isn't just unbelievable greed and theft by politician after politician? You think that, that, that if you just wrote off the debt, that would stop being an issue and everyone would become transparent and clean in their dealings with money? I mean, the problems are much deeper than this. They're much deeper than just a, a simple solution like that. As, if I may just add quickly to the, the previous two uh, comments, the, the, the late, very distinguished American uh, diplomat, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, had a, a wonderful rule he came up with, known as Moynihan's Law, where he said that, that uh, human rights, claims of human rights violations often happen in exactly inverse proportion to human rights violations. That is, you hear about them in the countries that are most free. And before long, you can end up with the presumption that the most free countries are the ones who are most abusive of human rights. And this happens with the case when we talk about our leaders and the ones... It's all very well. We can, we can talk about the Trump administration, we can talk about the democracies and, and so on for, for all, we, all we like. We can all make criticisms and we all should. But, okay, Briefly. Mr. Putin, what are you going to do about him? What are you going to do about the mullahs in Iran? What are you going to do about the House of Saud in Saudi Arabia? You see, what we end up with is this situation. We go, oh, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. We can all do that. Believe me, I can riff on but Trump again, all, you're being all quite day. Selective, aren't what you? are you going to do about the people you can't do anything about? Are you going to ignore them? Are you going to give them a pass? Well, or are you just going to enjoy beating well, up on the democ I, I, democracy? I hate to have to interrupt can I, can I, you. There's something called democracy, though, isn't there? Elections. Notice how the woman leading the panel thinks that she has just debunked all of what Douglas Murray has just said by simply referring to democracy. The very crux of Douglas Murray's argument is that most often developing countries tend to have less functional economic and democratic structures internally, such that just getting rid of the debt by itself would not entirely solve the migration crisis. Political instability and conflict within countries can further destabilize economies and endanger lives, pushing individuals to seek safety and stability abroad. The World Bank's reports indicate that political instability and violence significantly impact economic performance, reducing investments and hindering economic growth. This, in turn, exacerbates unemployment and poverty, pushing more people towards migration as a means of escaping untenable situations. This debate is about to get even more heated. Another question, please. Um, so I'm going to talk briefly about you know, my mother's experience as an immigrant, and I want to touch here on something that Mark Lamont Hill said, this power of education and telling people how refugees fit into the wider context of economic development. Here's why I'm very skeptical about that. Because when my mother arrived in the UK and her parents arrived in the UK, people still called them dirty packies. When she had graduated from Oxford University, she was still a brown person who was not seen as a citizen, right? So to what extent can we really sell this idea 
that being educated or fitting X, Y, and Z criteria is what you need to do as a refugee for people to humanize you. The inherent problem with these people is that they don't humanize you. You can't fulfill your oppressor's criteria so that they see you as human. So, so how do you humanize people? Dehumanizing refugees, thank you very much. And with this, let me go to you, uh, Douglas Murray. Because much of your uh, argument, Douglas, seems to be about the us versus them, the fact that, you know, we have our own values, our own Britishness, our own virtues, and they will come to our shores with their, their values, their tradition. They come to your countries with a lesser breed of values. No, Maybe. I don't think I said that at any point, and that's another time you've tried to put something in my well, mouth. Um, so when you talk about the difference the in list. values, what do you suggest? Um, look, uh, uh, first of all, I didn't say that. I said that there are challenges, because we do know that there are challenges, and let, let's, let's just be frank about this. I mean, for instance, I, I've been in, in the Gulf for uh, the last week or so. Uh, I, I've, I see more burqas in my home city of London than I have seen in the Gulf in recent days, certainly here in Doha. Now, I can't say I'm delighted by the, the, the sight of more and more burqas in London. Do, do I feel any hatred of the people who wear them? Of course not. Of course not. But I, I can't say I'm elated by it. And definitely there are times I think, you know, what percentage of burqas in this area becomes like not that pleasant for everyone else. But again, is it all down to burqas? Because again, you're not asking people I with other traditions whether they care about the sight of people drinking alcohol well, or, or well, showing well, up in well, bikinis. You, well, again, well, it's a well, very we could, we could Western-centric viewpoint. I'm, I'm not, I have to say, you're, you're going to bark up the wrong tree if you think you're going to persuade a Brit that we should stop drinking alcohol because of people arriving in our country. I mean, that's not going to happen. The, these things but are all a bit of give and take. you bring your but, own but traditions that don't quite fit with theirs. Well, they don't. Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are, as I said, and before before we got all confrontational, which you did from the get-go, I said what the problem is here is that these things are all rubbing against each other. And in that situation, you have to work out what things you're willing to give up, which things you're willing to compromise on, and which ones you're not. You're not going to persuade the Brits to massively change their culture. But let me just make the point. Every single society has certain aspects of it it doesn't want to give up. This one will in Qatar. This one will. Everyone does. So please don't which try to make this values? a kind of bigoted which of European your values? thing. Which of your values? Very, very dishonest way to, to that would be a very dishonest but, 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 way to One of the critical insights to consider in this debate is the difference in foundational values between traditionally liberal Western societies and those governed by strict interpretations of Islamic law. Western democracies have evolved to place a high value on individual rights, including the freedom of expression and the separation of church and state. This liberal tradition encourages a marketplace of ideas where beliefs and opinions, including those on religion, are subject to scrutiny, debate, and even satire. Murray's concern is that the acceptance or imposition of laws and norms that restrict these freedoms in favor of protecting religious sentiments could lead to a chilling effect on speech and thought. It's a scenario where the fear of offending can stifle creativity, intellectual debate, and the critical questioning of religious and societal norms. This debate is not theoretical, but has manifested in various incidents that have sparked international controversy. By understanding the complex pathways to radicalization, societies can develop more effective strategies to counter extremist narratives and foster an environment where diversity and dialogue thrive over division and discord. diversity and dialogue thrive over uh, division and discord. Wow. This video, you can tell Douglas Murray was, a uh, Douglas Murray point of view was actually uh, very, very uh, uh, honest. You can tell, uh, you see a lot of uh, immigrants coming into Britain with their own culture, with their own belief, with their own tradition. Uh, and I believe you coming into a country with your own culture and with your own belief. The country also has their own uh, culture. They have their own tradition. So I believe uh, in order for you to be able to fit in, you have to learn how to accommodate uh, the people's culture because uh, they are not going to uh, change their culture to uh, they are not going to change their culture uh, because of uh, the immigrants because you are actually the one that is 
coming into their country. So in order for you to be able to fit in, you have to be able to accommodate uh, their culture. And what uh, the point that uh, uh, the first guy, the question he asked uh, that he was talking about, uh, uh, that a lot of this uh, developing country is because of uh, the debt they, they get from the developed country that at the end of the day, uh, they, they find it difficult to pay the debt. And because of that, you see a lot of people uh, leaving their country, migrating to uh, other developed country. That is because of the de debt that a lot of wealth are flowing from uh, from the developing country into the developed country as a result of uh, the debt. So I believe Douglas Murray also addressed uh, his question by saying that uh, it's not it's not about uh, the debt. It's not about the debt. That is about uh, uh, economic factor and uh, political instability, and you can tell that a lot of these uh, developing countries, uh, you see that uh, the government is not uh, the government is not stable, and there are a lot of corruption, there are a lot of embezzlement, even uh, the economy factor. Douglas Moore was talking about uh, plays uh, a vital role. You don't have to uh, blame uh, everything on debt. Everything on debt. I believe uh, the developing country lending a hand. Uh, the de the developed country countries lending a hand to uh, the de uh, the developing country is a way to enrich. It's a way to enrich the the developing country because you can't tell me. Uh, you can't tell me. I'm the one offering 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 help to you by giving you loan to develop your country. Uh, you can't blame me uh, 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 for your mistake that I'm I'm the reason why your citizens are migrating is because I I am offering the help hand to you. So I believe uh I believe in the first place developing developed country uh giving loan to developing country. I see that as I see that as help. I see that as a way to uh 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 to to help the developing to help the developing country to be able to you know uh invest that loan and build up their country. So I don't think uh uh people migrating from uh from developing country to developed country is as a result of debt. That I don't think is as a result of debt, because even when the debt is totally cleared, even when the debt is totally cleared, you still see people migrating from the developing country to uh, uh to, to the developed country because they are all seeking for greener pasture. Everyone is looking for where they'll be able to uh they'll, they'll be able to live in peace, they'll be able to uh uh to work and they'll be able to cater for their family. I think everyone is seeking for that greener pasture. So you can't blame that on uh on debt. You can't blame that on debt. I believe just as Douglas Murray have said in this video that there are a lot of factors that 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 play a very vital role in this, which is about uh, uh government uh, instability, uh, uh, economies, and all that. So I believe uh the 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 developed country are not to be blamed uh as are not to be blamed for or uh, the reason for uh the 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 immigrant uh. The, the the reason for immigrants leaving their country. I don't think the developed country have to be blamed for that. And just like uh, Douglas Murray have said uh, in this video that I've said in this video that a lot of those people coming into uh the developed country, they are coming with their own culture, they are coming with their own tradition. So I believe you coming into someone, you coming into uh, a country that is not your country, you should be able to uh. Uh, accommodate the country's culture. You should be able to accommodate the country's culture. So I believe that's the right thing to do. And I've actually learned a lot listening to uh, Douglas Murray. You can tell Douglas Murray is a very intelligent and learned person. I really learned a lot from this video. And in case you want to watch uh, the full video without interruption, uh, this video was actually gotten from our Modern Wisdom YouTube channel. I believe uh, he did some editing. You can also check out uh, Douglas Murray channel. I believe you'll be able to see this video and 
support uh support him for the contribution uh he's making wow don't forget click on the subscribe button click on the like button do have a nice day Thank you.